Before we begin talking about chemical equilibrium, we must first understand what equilibrium really means. This is when you search for define equilibrium and the results that you get tell you things like the balance of opposing forces or when supply equals demand. How can this apply in a chemistry context? When we think of equilibrium of atoms and molecules, which tend to react with one another, we envision equilibrium as a state where the number and types of atoms and molecules stay constant. But that is not to say that no reactions are occurring. Let's say I have one mole of H2O gas and I have one mole of H2O liquid in this imaginary container. We know that some H2O gas molecules are colliding with the surface of the liquid. It loses energy and condenses into the liquid state. At the same time, we know that some molecules of H2O liquid having sufficient kinetic energy will be able to break free of the intermolecular attractions between itself and its neighbours and enter the gaseous state from the liquid state or evaporation. Equilibrium happens in this system of, of gaseous and liquid water where the rate of condensation of water is the same as the rate of evaporation of water. Chemical equilibrium is a dynamic equilibrium where the rate of reaction in one direction is equal to the rate of reaction in the opposite direction. This means that for an arbitrary reaction A plus B gives you C plus D, the rate of the forward reaction R1 is the same as the rate of the backward reaction R minus 1. This of course means that the reaction has to be a reversible reaction, otherwise there will be no R minus 1, and the reaction will proceed to completion. Why are some reactions irreversible and some reversible? That has to do with the thermodynamic or kinetic stability of the products, which will not be covered in this lecture series. But in the time that you would have been studying, you would already have a good grasp of what reactions are reversible and what are not. The melting of ice and the dissolution of salt in water, for example, are reversible reactions. In fact, the concept of equilibrium was created by someone who noticed salt forming on the side of the lake, when he which he then postulated to be the result of the reversibility of dissolution. Other reactions, like combustion for example, are not reversible. When you put water, carbon dioxide and charred remains together, chances are you will not get your fuel and oxygen back. In the topic of equilibrium, you will only encounter reversible reactions. So don't get yourself too caught up with the concept of reversibility. Let us explore more about this in the next checkpoint.